Hey everybody, it's Goblin X, and welcome back to some more Magic Arena, and today we'll be playing another best of three traditional draft of Murders at Karlov Manor. Without further ado, let's get into the pack one pick one. Not a big fan of our rare here, but the exit specialist uncommon is pretty sweet with the flip ability to bounce something, so that's a pretty high pick in this pack. But it's competing with three really good commons. The inside source to get a wide board state, the novice inspector for insane value for only one mana, and the shock for super efficient removal. So all these four I think would be really viable places to start, but I'm just going to grab that novice inspector. Pick number two now, we've got a Museum Night Watch, which is one of the more solid white commons. Not one of the premium ones or anything, but super solid, replacing itself with another 2-2 when it trades off. Wisp Drinker Vampire is fine when you're already in black-white, but I don't see it as a particularly big reason to jump into the color pair. And basically the rest of this pack is really bad. The Fairy Snoops are pretty filler, the Detonation is quite weak removal compared to what Red has out of its other commons. Scoundrels a million mana, Mortipede's inconsistent, Bubble Smuggler's a million mana, and these uncommons are not particularly premium either, so I'm just going to take the Night Watch. Pick number three, we've got a Haas the Vigilante, which is a solid five drop. Get some counters onto your board. Great with small creatures like Novice Inspectors and 2-2 two -two Detectives and stuff, so I do like the Vigilante at the top end of my curve in my white decks. Yeah, the only good card here outside of the white card is just like a Forensic Researcher. Solid for really slow, grindy decks. But I think we're perfectly happy to just stick to white. Another pretty weak pack here. Pick number four. Alright, this pack's actually kind of solid. There's Red Herring for aggressive red decks, just because you need some two mana creatures. There's an on the job for white decks that can go really wide. It's a huge finisher there. And there's a Flourishing Bloomkin for green decks that really helps ramp with the Disguise Flip ability there. So I think these three are all exceptional. Well, Red Herring isn't exceptional. <laughs> Bloomkin and on the job are, uh, are pretty great. And then Red Herring is... Pretty good just because there's not a lot of two mana stuff to do, not because it's inherently a really good card by itself. Bloomkin are on the job. I'll take the on the job here just to stick to what we're doing. And I do think the card's pretty nice. In pick five, we see a Loxton on Eavesdropper here. One of the best cards in the last pack was also green, so this could be a decent sign that we're going to get past good green cards from the right. So we'll get more green out of pack three. I do think Loxton on Eavesdropper is the best card in this pack. Second best, probably like Deduce or Agency Outfit or something, but those aren't those aren't nearly as good. There's a pretty wide gap between Eavesdropper and the second best cards there. Pick six, blue looking potentially open with Evidence Examiner and Cold Case Cracker. Great value plays out of both of those. We could stick to Green White taking a Vengeful Creeper, which is nice main deckable artifact enchantment removal, because you just flip this up as a finisher anyway. As a 5-5, when you do blow up an artifact or enchantment with it, you are very happy. Creeper is also more flexible, so even if we don't play white, we don't have to go specifically green-blue like we would for Examiner, but Examiner might be good enough to be worth taking over Creeper. I'm still just going to take Creeper, though. Pick 7. Eh, pretty mediocre stuff. Favorite cards are Deduce and Accusation. Not by a lot, though. I'll just take the Accusation. Pick number eight. Great top end for blue with Hotshot Investigators and solid uh, value at three mana with the Furtive Courier. I'm going to go for the Courier. Consistent um, looting there with the draw discard every turn is pretty nice. All right, I'm perfectly happy with another Vengeful Creeper here, pick nine. Sun Setback always feels slightly too expensive to be great to me. And Investigator's is a decent top end, but so is Creeper. I think I like my green a tiny bit more than my blue. Alright, pick 10 has nothing. There is a combo we have here. If we get a Curious Inquiry onto a Furtive Courier, then anytime the Courier hits our opponent, we get a clue. Next turn, we sack the clue to make it unblockable, and that guarantees we hit them again to get the new clue. So that's kind of cute. 
So relatively weak pack one overall, but we're in a fine position here to go any combination of blue, white, and green based on how pack two swings around. So see what we got here. Well, I guess we're playing white. Wojak Investigator is the rare out of this pack. Three mana, two, four, Flying Vigilance, already a busted stat line, but it's also potentially investigating every turn, as long as our opponent has more cards in hand than us. So it is at its best in a really quick, cheap aggro deck that can dump its hand out super quick, but it's still incredible in anything. So just take the Investigator, by far the best card in the pack. Second best is probably the Galvanize out of red. Pack two, pick two, all right, a second novice inspector. We are quite likely to be in white because we have this Wojak investigator now, so we'll just stick to it and grab the best common in the set. Pack two, pick three, another furtive courier works pretty decently with the double novice inspector, especially if we can get even more investigations, so courier's probably gonna be fine here. I do like auspicious arrival as well as a combat trick. Yeah, let's see. What's our creature to non-creature count look like? Only three non-creatures right now. Maybe we do actually want to combat trick pretty badly, but I think I still take Courier over it. We'll see. Start looking at this view a little more. Now we are quite a bit deeper into blue than green, but that is a lot of blue filler. Agency Outfit are just not playable without the other two cards, the Glass plus Cap. And even then you have to run two pretty mediocre cards in your deck to make this good when you play it. Uh, unauthorized exit's fine. Eliminate the impossible is fine. These green cards are not great. Panther and Maverick are okay. But I think I'd rather just take unauthorized exit towards blue-white. Pick number five. Nothing much in green. Nothing much in blue. I think Wrench is a little bit better than Candlestick. So I suppose we take Wrench here. I could also just try to flip up Technicians for double blue. It's also fine. I usually do end up cutting most of the equipment in the format. I'll take a Technician. Double blue flip there. Act 2 pick 6 is a great build for Granite Witness, so we'll take that pretty easily. It is so rare to open a Field of the Dead in this set, and I don't think I'm ever going to be in the position to play this. This You have to be in the Magical Christmas Land draft pod where you've already like drafted two niv to get you to take every rare duel that you see. <laughs> like The odds of ending up in a Field of the Dead deck are so insanely low, but it would be so cool to see. Very easy cold case cracker, very good value flyer at 4 mana. Pick eight, take another cold case cracker or another dramatic accusation. Oh snap, these are all three mana. There, there's the curve. I'm gonna take another cold case cracker. Accusation is quite mediocre removal. So I think I'd rather just be pretty low on removal than run like three copies of that. Investigators is fine. I've got a lot of stuff to flip, so I already do have quite a bit to do with my mana though, so I'll just take like a cheap little flyer for the early game i guess uh, i do like out cold a lot in this kind of strategy could take thinking cap to try to get the cap plus magnifying glass but i think i'd rather just not try to run the outfitter in the end if i have to take a thinking cap over an out cold to get there because this is a great swing in your favor in any race all right pack three i only need four more playables ideally we find more than that though so we can cut some of the filler like Agency Outfitter without cards to go with it. And for our opening pack here, it's pretty weak. Fey Flight is kind of narrow, but it is really good when you do get to counter a removal spell with it. Um, probably just take Consultant so we actually get some two mana plays on the curve. Not that it's a particularly good card, it just helps uh, keep us doing stuff throughout the game. Yeah. It'd be a pick one seasoned consultant here, I think. Pick two, projector inspector quite easily. This is a great way to dig through your deck in these blue white detective decks. Find whatever you need. Big fan of the card. Take it over on the draw because we do not have a lot of cards for going super wide. So we don't really want more than one on the job. 
No two mana, two mana or one mana creatures again, which is kind of awkward, but that's fine. We get another projector inspector, which is quite good. If we wield a call a surprise witness, when you have multiple copies of cards like projector inspector alongside multiple cards like furtive courier, that makes the card much more playable. Because the issue with call a surprise witness is if you're in one of those decks or one of those games where you're kind of just attacking past each other and you never trade off a creature, this is going to be stuck in your hand doing nothing. Um, but you can get around that by having a bunch of cards that draw and discard a card um, so that that card is always going to be relevant. All right, once again, I think two drops are important, even if they are quite filler like the Jaded Analyst. But this deck out of, I think, any deck I've drafted so far is the best at actually attacking with these. We have four cards that draw a card and discard a card pretty much every turn. And we have like five or six cards that make a clue token, so... Probably the best Jaded Analyst deck that I have drafted so far. Which doesn't mean that Analyst is great here, it just means it's definitely playable. Another Cold Case Cracker here. And that is our 24th playable, so we can cut the Agency Outfitter now. Deduce is fine. Vigilante is fine. Be one of these two. Creature non-creature count, 18 to 5. I guess it's deduce then. Three pick seven. Well, there's magnifying glass and thinking cap. <laughs> Maybe we do get the double up because there's nothing I actually am that interested in playing. Maybe due diligence, so. I'll take the glass and see if I wheel one of these thinking caps we've been seeing, and if we do, then we'll put the outfitter in here alongside glass and thinking cap. All right, I'm actually pretty happy with Museum Nightwatch here. Cut like Bubble Smuggler for the filler creature to remove for this. And I do need to remove one more card. We can cut Gadget Technician. Yeah, these are all pretty synergistic. Makes a lot of sense here. Yeah, this looks pretty good. Like, pretty average here, but I think slightly above average. I don't hate this at all. Like, really slightly above average, but still. I think probably one of the better decks we could have ended up in out of this pod. So, we'll roll with it. We did not find a thinking cap. Didn't wheel one of those to go with the magnifying glass. So, no Sphinx. This is just the deck. We will call it a deck here and just swap things around uh, according to our matchups if we want a sideboard. All right, here's a look at the completed deck list for today. Another solid, slightly above average blue-white detectives deck here. This is apparently my favorite archetype in the format because it's what we end up drafting the most. I think that blue just ends up being open a decent bit and white is just strong enough that we end up playing a few white cards a lot. So that just kind of pushes us in this direction a decent bit. Anyways, this deck looks pretty solid. We have some really good ways to make sure we're always making the most of our mana because we're going to have a lot of clue tokens just sitting around with Novice Inspectors, Deduce, Curious Inquiry, Cold Case Crackers, Out Cold, On the Job, plenty of things that are making some random clue tokens. So anytime we have extra mana laying around, we get to crack some clues with it. We've got decent interaction here. Only one way to actually permanently kill something with the Dramatic Accusation but we do have a lot of stunning and bouncing with an out cold, an unauthorized exit, some tapping effects with like Granite Witness here. So pretty decent ways to try to get around our opponent's board and uh, tempo them out. Just kill them before their stuff untaps at certain times and maybe curve out with a bunch of good hard to block creatures. Tons of flyers here with cold case crackers and Granite Witnesses and Wojak Investigators and potentially unblockable furtive couriers as long as we get to crack some clue tokens with them. So really decent stuff today. We'll see how it all plays out as we head into the gameplay. Here we are for game one on the play with a really excellent hand. It's a little low on mana, but the novice inspectors we can use to crack clues to get to our land drops on curve. So if I don't hit land three immediately, I'd rather crack a clue than play another inspector. But if we do, then we just get to play another inspector. The only really important thing here being playing Courier turn 3. If we can resolve the Courier turn 3, then that means on turn 4, we can attack with a Courier to draw a card, discard a card, and crack a clue token before we need to have drawn a fourth land. Which gives us 
tons of time to find land for and still play it on turn or on curve. Just means we don't get to on the job turn four, which is probably fine, but this board state's actually sweet with on the job. So if we do get to do it, then sure. All right. Send on in and ditch the jaded analyst. Because if we on the job, then we're not playing the analyst this turn. And even if we don't on the job, then we'll cold case cracker this turn. So there's the on the job. Put them down to 11 and keep the courier on board. Excellent work from that card. They really got to spend some removal on courier at this point. We have three clue tokens threatening to hit them unblockably for three damage a turn, three turns in a row. There's a Mistway Spy and a Steam Core Scholar to clog up the board. The Scholar also letting them draw to discard one to dig for removal. Well, they don't have an instant Sorcery or Flyer in hand that they want to discard, so it is draw two, discard two. All right, I have two options here. I can play the Vigilante to make an Inspector two, three, and attack with that, or I can crack a clue and attack with three unblockable damage. I think... Even though we're less likely to actually hit our opponent, just expanding the board state and getting another beefy creature out here is worth not setting in the courier right now. Alright, and if they just don't want to block, then we still hit for two. That's only one less damage, and it's still enough damage to kill them in three swings of unblockability. So the clock remains the same. All right, we've got two draws to attempt to hit land four to crack a clue and play the cold case cracker. So let's crack the clue to get on blockability. Uh, but we might actually just play another courier, honestly, so we don't even need the fourth land. Um, but I think I'm attacking with the whole board here. 17 life. I don't think I need more than like one blocker up. Uh, Granite witness on vigilante is very nice here. All right. Yeah, Vigilante was going to be a really good attacker there to be able to buff the other Inspector and get that sending in, but it's still an okay attack. Um, Ditch Deduce? With multiple clues to spend, I think I'm ditching Deduce. Keep playing lands for turn so we can get towards like 7 mana next turn. Like, I'm definitely playing Courier instead of Cold Case Cracker this turn. But. Um, I think I still do want additional lands. You know, four mana for this plus two to crack a clue. Alright, well, they have to, like, kill me here. Because they still didn't block an Office Inspector there, which is really surprising. They. Uh, maybe they have a board wipe or something? If they board wipe, we've still got a 3-3 flyer, two clue tokens to be fine. Well, let's see. They're at four. That's six unblockable damage. There's got to be some really good spells here. Out cold, I guess. Out cold is a really good spell. Oh, yeah, that's kind of exceptional. Stop two attacks from our two unblockable creatures. They are still forced into a couple blocks here. Never mind, I guess they're going to gain life or kill a novice inspector. Or not. All right, well, a weird ending to that game, but pretty close stuff overall. Hopefully the Magic Arena team can get around to fixing this bug. Really hope they fix this before the Arena Open, because if we get into an Arena Open Day 2 draft, I have to actually keep a notepad instead of getting to view Battlefield <laughs> for my sideboard options. That's going to be pretty annoying. That's a lot of why we're doing best of three drafts right now, getting some practice for the Arena Open coming up March 3rd, 4th. I believe. So by the time this video comes out, it's only like a couple days from the arena open. Uh, 
Yeah. Um, doing a giant spiel about arena bugs has deleted the last 10 minutes of my memory and I don't even remember what we were playing against. Blue White Detectives Mirror, right? They had Granite Witness. Yeah, they had a lot of flyers. They had that out cold for the big stun. I don't think there was anything like super specific to sideboard around, and our deck doesn't really have sideboard options in the first place, so yeah, we just run it back. All right, we are on the draw here, desperately looking for land three, but because we're on the draw, got three whole draw steps to get there. And if we hit land three, these inspectors can really dig towards the fifth, towards Vigilante. First couple draws are both lands. Perfectly happy with that. Analyst is going to be a Vigilant attacker, so I'm not going to block here. I mean, maybe it is nice to clear out a potential flyer from our opponent. All right, our opponent doesn't want to attack anyway. Uh, yeah, Vigilance, so it sends in and still holds off. So we project our Inspector over Courier because it's going to be a while before we get a clue. Nothing in our hand makes any clues for the Courier. That is land six, which currently don't really care about. Yeah, ditch land six. I do care about land five, so it'll be... A little awkward if we find, if we top deck a good non-land card and then draw another non-land card off the inspectors, then we have to make some decisions as to what the best ones are. Ooh, wow, yeah, we get to just dig through our whole deck at this point. Yeah, draw f four, discard four. I guess. Oh. Vigilante is really good with double inspector. Ditch courier, but the courier with double inspector is really good too. Feels wrong to ditch the land. Let's see, yeah, this is the issue. I guess I only really want one, right? Because we play one Inspector, then we spend five on a Vigilante next turn. We're not going to play another Inspector for quite some time. I'm going to not do this anymore. I feel like I'm just going to be building myself if I activate more. Now that I've seen what can happen. <laughs> If I were a better player and I knew exactly like the best hand we could craft here, I would probably go for the draw four, discard four, but I'm not a better player. There are literal professional articles out there written by pro magic players about how you should basically literally always loot unless you have the best card in your hand. But I think things line up just so well here. I don't see how we craft a better hand there. That's a lot of mana up. Counter our Vigilante here. They can't counter the Furtive Courier unless they have the No Way Out, the blue-white counter. But if I play Courier, I don't want to crack the clue this turn anyway. So I'm not being mana efficient. We'll just go for the Vigilante. Playing the Courier only plays around the counter unless you pay two Now out cold the inspectors? Sure. So they plan on using just removal or removal on Vigilante, I imagine. Makeshift binding it or something. Or they're splashing black, so. Slice. Just cut right through it. I'm just gonna tap it for now. Yeah, they're just gonna tempo out race us off this out cold, it looks like. Oh my god, yeah, that's an entire board of flyers. So we're pretty dead unless we find our own out cold. I get to draw three discard two next turn. 
Maybe I should have done all the digging in the world just for out gold specifically. Off the inspectors. The draw four, discard four. I mean, at the time, they only had a 1-1 one, one flyer and a 2-2 two, two that sometimes gets flying in terms of evasive threats. I mean, that turn was just pretty terrible for us. That is not a detective. Why is that not a detective? Shoot. All right, well, that ruins the plan. Basically, their whole board can get flying. I kind of have to just crack the clue now, then. This eight damage on board if they play something to give Market Watch Phantom flying. If they don't, we can trade Courier into it on blocks. If they've got an on the job, we're just dead, dead. But I just don't have flyers this game. All right, if we die here to on the job, then we know for game three to dig a lot farther and find the out colds because of just how many flyers there are all the time. I can't block any of these. See if I can find on the drop to kill them, or I can find removal to survive. That is one single blocker. I have exact lethal here. They have to trade one of their flyers off. We can maybe get there. If they don't have instant speed removal as the last card in hand, they have to lose one flyer here, and then I block another flyer. But they've got a clue to search for removal, too. And I don't have enough mana to get this clue token to find me... Um, an Outcold. Oh no, they're on the 50 copies of Outcold deck. This is going to be a difficult matchup, then. Okay, well, this is definitely why you investigate her post-combat. They have to still find removal or another tapper to kill me because of the investigator. But they've got two clues to dig now, so they'll have three cards in hand next turn. If any of those can tap or kill a creature, we're dead. Let's draw two, discard two by playing this. That way I can get this on board and maybe have interaction. If we find our two mana bounce, I think we have one of those in this deck. Yeah, we do. Unauthorized exit would be the best draw on the deck. That is not that. That's three mana. Oh. They're at seven life. We keep the accusation. Six, seven, eight. Make it. Oh, no, they have two vigilant cards. God dang. Guess maybe I play consultant to make lethal more likely. I mean, these both make lethal just as likely, right? They're both getting like three more damage in. Guess I keep that and crack the clue with my extra mana right now. Although, if I keep Consultant, I get another clue? Sure. I guess. Well, I guess it's at the beginning of my upkeep, so it's just like a maybe I'll get another clue. Either way, I can't hold up interaction here for if they can deal with Investigator. But yeah, now maybe I get another clue, because they'll dig... well... We're, we're dead, right? Yeah, they killed Mistway Spy and Investigator. Well, that sucks. We were dead to any removal, but seeing it be Kaya is terrible. It's still a really close game, tempo-wise. One last copy of Out Cold, we win that game handedly. And just being on the play, we maybe even outrace them.
So really happy to be on the play for game three. I think this is a reasonable matchup, and I don't think there's anything we can sideboard into. So let's run it back, cross our fingers, try to go slightly quicker here. I think both of these games have really been one turn away from going the other the other direction, so it's going to be a close match. Solid start, inquiry on the spy. We didn't see any bounce or hard removal from our opponent yet still, so I don't think it's that bold to just slam a inquiry onto this turn two. just been a lot of stun. Exit their first play or draw a card here, or I play the witness so it hastes next turn when we flip it up. I'll play the witness. Next turn, four mana is perfect for um, flip and draw a card or bounce and draw a card. All right, well, can't play around a counter spell if you don't see it in the first two games. RIP witness. That is annoying. Vigilante is a great draw here, actually, with the Mistway Spy. Welcome to my face. Just gonna flip that to tap our Spy next turn, I guess. Just bounce it right now, but I can also just draw two. Let's just draw two. Make sure we hit land five. If they double counterspell us, okay, or we just hit no lands. I was going to say, if they double counterspell us after playing zero counterspells in the first two games, that would be really sad on the Vigilante here. Drawing three cards for this turn and not finding land five is also very sad. Oh my god. It was Granite Witness all along. That's crazy. There's a lot of mana they're just chilling with still. You know? I don't love this, but I certainly don't hate it. I guess I can crack the clue first, and then I could play one of my three drops alongside cracking the clue if I hit a land. I could go for Accusation instead if we hit land here. Okay. Save the unauthorized exit for the next card. I'm just going to out cold here, I imagine. That's crazy. Another Granite Witness, most likely. Just get a 4-4, they can't counter it right now. Get a 4-4 and buff the Spy, so we have two 3-3 Flyers. Board State's really good for us. Even if we gotta wait one more turn to swing. All right, so now they're going to flip the Granite Witness, tap the Cold Case Cracker to try to trade into the Mistway Spy. Um, but then we can unauthorized exit the Witness. And they have to replay it. But then they do get to re-tap with it, which is annoying. Mm, I don't know, like Vigilante gets in here too, so should I play... I don't have anything the Vigilante can buff. I have no power to or less stuff anyway. Okay, yeah, we don't play anything pre-combat. We just... Just roll in, I think. Oh, they're still going to tap the Spy? Okay, that's fine. 
Much rather trade cold case cracker into the witness than the spy into it. Or they might just not be blocking here, is why they tap the spy. Yeah, they're just not going to be blocking, sure. They're down to seven. can play a three drop and bounce one of their permanents and keep the land so I can draw a card, discard a card with the land. I think I would rather just get another flyer and be able to bounce one of their permanents. Then play a three drop and bounce a permanent here. Bounce one in the end step to try to find lethal with this board state. We're at 18, so they're not going to lethal us. Well, this should be filthy. This is worth it. I mean, we kill their token and completely counter due diligence and they get zero damage out of it. Yeah. All right. Close, close match there. A game three went pretty handily in our direction, but they got stuck on lands pretty bad. We almost got stuck on lands pretty bad. If we didn't get to investigate like four times off Mistway Spy, we would have been pretty stuck on lands because I don't think we hit land five till we cracked all three clues. So... Could have gone a lot a lot worse, but actually really happy with the Curious Inquiry Mistway Spy for this matchup, because again, we saw very little hard removal from our opponent. They had Kaya, and they had a bunch of like Tapper style removal. So yeah. Huge work from Curious Inquiry that game. That was probably the most important card of the game. So much draw out of that so early to get to this late game and uh, get our lands before our opponent could when we were both digging for them. All right. We start things off 1-0, and oh, heading into round 2. Here we are on the play for game 1 of round 2. Ball at hand. Play whatever we want turn 2, whatever we want turn 3. If I play Consultant, I can start poking for 1. If I play Analyst, then if I draw into one of my cards that draws a card, discards a card, I can poke for 3. Uh, Consultant doesn't attack past a Novice Inspector anyway, so I'll play the Analyst first, just in case I top deck my 3-2 that draws a card, discards a card. Ah, uh, well, I could have played Consultant to play around Red Herring, but we didn't even see a Mountain from our opponent at the time, so... What are you gonna do? Just hold them off here. They're Boros, they're probably an on-the-job kind of deck for the top end, so I think holding them off with Analyst is fine. Just instantly trading into the Red Herring. And speaking of things we want to do in this kind of matchup, I think we want to play the Museum Nightwatch first, so we can trade that off aggressively. Clear out one more of their creatures while still leaving a 2-2 behind, and we've got perfect mana to set that up alongside Novice Inspector, even if I don't hit a land. Right now I just block their face down and flip mine up, um, or we just draw a card off the clue, thanks to Novice Inspector. Clue tokens are so good. see what they got here. Well, I, I have to flip here. They might not have to. All right, sweet. Great trade for us. We clear out their creature and get a replacement. All right, now they've got a Griffnot tracker, which is kind of spooky, but they are down to only three cards in hand, and we have flyers in this deck, one in hand already with the Granite Witness. Can certainly attack with our 2 2 on this board. Then, kind of want to deduce and really hope for land for. Then I can play Consultant 2. We are kind of desperate for it, but I could also just play Courier or Granite Witness. These are only guaranteed ways to affect the board because if I deduce into a non land, it's going to be quite bad, unless it's a second inspector. I'm at 20. I'm going to play Courier here. Take a couple hits from the Griffnot Tracker, but this sets up for Courier to start doing some digging without having to spend any mana to look for lands. And if they play really good blockers, we can still spend a little bit of mana. Give the Courier unblockable here. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Alright, we find land for now. Pretty scared of the number of things they have on their board. Let's just Granite Witness and hold off for 
Um, blocks that don't die to an on the job. Our board state's actually pretty good against all on the job. It's not perfect, but we can block two toughness creatures with three power creatures so that the plus two plus one doesn't really matter. All right, I'll just take the trade here unless they have a plus two plus two trick, in which case we're pretty sad. They do not have a plus two plus two trick. They just have another creature. Okay, wide board state. They draw into an on the job. We're pretty dead. That's five creatures now because it's just every card they drew was a creature. Okay. Um, Consultant deduce is the line. I guess it's a little better to crack the clue than deduce so I can get courier in. Courier's not a particularly appealing blocker. Trading into a 2-2. And hopefully we can find a better blocker here off of our draw 2 discard 1. I've already played land for turns, so I can't consultant and unauthorized exit much as I'd love to. Play Furtive Courier Copy 2 instead of Seasoned Consultant? I guess... More man efficient. Digs for our one out cold, which would be massive here. Our opponent is playing off the top, but if they find on the job, we're mega dead. And even if they don't, this is a sketchy board. Yeah, I don't I don't think we're favored here. At all. Down to 11. We survive long enough. We do a lot of great digging here. I don't need unblockability on Courier this turn to get my draw discard. But I also slightly need to be able to just trade it on blocks. It's 15 to 11. Got an on the job at hand. We can find creatures. We can still maybe cheese a victory out of this one. With on the job. Projector inspector? That's great. I can play that and still have two mana interaction up, so we ditch land six. We drop this. Find Mistway Spy. I could play that instead of unauthorized exiting here, but I think we ditch Deduce, and we're going to try to unauthorized exit and then crack back with the whole board. For an on the job kill. I think that's the play. Forum familiar pickup novice inspector. Okay. That's not horrible. I guess that makes it more likely for them to have two blockers up now, though. Because now they play novice inspector, draw a card, play another blocker, and then I don't kill them because they have two blockers up instead of one. Yeah. Now we have to find removal for that face down to kill them in one swing. So we keep the unauthorized exit and just poke for three again with furtive courier and hold everybody up for blocks instead. Is that a line? Or do I just surveil and hope? Two outs that would kill them. 
No, because it'd have to be cheap enough removal to deal with the face down and cast on the job, which doesn't exist. A one mana way to deal with a face down. Yeah, so we're definitely not killing them here, so we just hold this then. And we have to play defense. Yeah, it's not good. Play this face up, I draw, discard a card, but if I play it face down, it's big enough to actually trade. Seven life? If they block... If they don't block here, we can still just kill them with on the job, and if they do, none of these blocks are super profitable for them, and then I can still have some blockers up. This is really bold, but I'm just going to send in. I'm going to go full bold here. Because so our opponent probably has their own game plans ahead of just, like, insta-crack lethal on the crack back. Okay, no. We do not get the kill here. So, trade bounce, poke for three. Two blockers up, Mistway Spy plus Unauthorized Exit being the, the two blockers, basically. Sure. Can still sneak an on-the-job victory in next turn. Potentially. Oh, we cleared out the dog walker before it got any dogs. Doesn't feel bad. Dead the Lightning Helix? I think Lightning Helix is the only card in the set that kills me here. Because if they try to play a combat trick or something, I bounce in response. So I don't think I bounce right now. Lightning Helix is an uncommon. It's the only one that's just direct three damage. Okay. Face down. God dang. Just top deck nothing but creatures. Their deck is just 20 creatures. Well, it's good to know for how we're playing in the future. Plays have just not lined up because it's just creature, 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 creature. I think I have to dig here. I could again try to surprise on the job, but the way they're playing, it's like it's just two more creatures in hand. And they're just going to keep jamming creatures on blocks here. Because they have plenty more to just dump out. Give me more defenses. That's an issue. Dead to any interaction if I just play this face down. I'm super dead to dog walkers, but I've been for a while. Okay. They didn't flip a dog walker. The really annoying thing here is I have to give them a really good forum familiar replay to not die on board. <laughs> what? Okay. Alright. Essence of Antiquity, Forum Familiar, Boros. So it's it's just 20 creature Boros. You gotta love Magic Arena and the black screen and sideboarding where legally in competitive Magic, in any game of Magic, I'm supposed to be able to see what their other face downs were, but I don't get to because I can't look back at the game. So we don't get to know what the other ones were, but we know about the Essence of Antiquity. It, it genuinely just feels like 20, 23 creature Boros. They played literally nothing but creatures all game. So it's not like we have a 
particular sideboard for that, but the way that we're playing changes a lot, because a lot of what we were doing there was playing around combat tricks, removal, that kind of thing, and that made all those lines a little worse. If they have just none in their deck, and we know they're just going to keep jamming out creatures, we can make plays accordingly. Yeah, like if I... If I had like an exact copy of our, their deck list going into that game, we probably could have won game one, but I made a lot of defensive plays trying to not die tricks and stuff, and a lot of offensive plays that um, that were banking on them trying to crack back with their own tricks and stuff, but they just never had any tricks, so they had no reason to try to do that. All right, well... Not the most standard Boros build ever. And there are certainly better ways to play our future games this round, but not really a better way to build this deck. Absolutely on the play. Analyst into Inspector's great. Get things rolling. Turn one novice inspector. The dream card, the dream start in the format. Turn two nothing. Here's projector inspector to get out of this flood. And then I get to play a Granite Witness, trigger Projector Inspector again, and keep attacking in with Vigilance. Start looks really good. Against just a mountain of creatures. The mountain of creatures continues. got the deduce to trigger analyst two more turns so i don't think i need to keep inspector i think it's worth getting aggressive jamming three in here great well that is an annoying sideboard option Card is tremendously good against us. If I deduce, I can attack with Analyst this turn. Um, I have two cards in hand. It should be kind of hard for them to get below two cards in hand by the end of their turn. Should still be able to get the Wojak Investigation. Oh, nice. Clear out the Reach creature if we get another 1-1 uh, or 3-2 flyer. Okay, Red Herring. Crack it. Alright, they're definitely not going to be low enough on cards to stop us from investigating then. Time to just go to Value Town. With Investigator on board, the way we always want to play it out is dump our hand first and then start cracking all of our clues so that our hand size is always less than our opponent's as long as possible. So we slam down the cold case cracker and then crack a clue in their end step. They do find torch. They have non-creature spells. We found them. Torch the Witness on Investigators, very good. Kills it and draws them a card. Luckily, we're still uh, ahead here, I think, because we have the better board state and just as much cards as them because of all these clues, basically. I think we're going to play a face down spy and crack a clue. That's annoying. That exile to stop us from getting the clue there. 
Uh, I don't have instant speed interaction, so I should crack the clue right now in case I hit Novice Inspector. We've got two in the deck. Oh, we hit the blue card. The one, one blue mana card instead of the one of the two, one white mana cards. Okay, there's a bunch of creatures, but now it's time to go all the way to Value Town, right? Get two clue tokens this turn and another clue every turn from here on. I do think they had a small enough amount of removal that a uh, Curious Inquiry should be pretty good in this matchup. Okay. I don't know if I played my land for turn last turn or not. If I didn't, I should have cracked a clue there instead of holding the mana up to scare them. Take four. This is probably like forum familiar essence of antiquity again. The Essence of Antiquity does give Hexproof, so it could counter an out cold. So I kind of want an unauthorized exit to see if I can get them to flip and counter, and then when they do that in response, I can out cold before their whole board gets Hexproof. That's probably reasonable. It's a combat trick. Oh, it's just form familiar up the perimeter enforcer, sure. Yeah, I don't want to out cold tell their combat still. Yeah, maybe at 10 life, no lifelink on their board. We actually just run this out and then unauthorized exit. Save the out cold. Alright, let's make them flip the essence here. If they want to keep that on blocks. They do not. I don't hate land 7, because then I can Accusation to bait out a flip and then out cold. But we actually don't even need to out cold right now, because they don't have any flyers face up, so... Have the life total. Oops. Six, seven reach. Alright, then we out cold now. And then we Accusation the detective. Hey, we got there. <laughs> nice. Mana efficiency. Dang, they hit another flyer, so we're not going to kill them this turn. Still force a chump block. Three mana to interact here. So we can crack all the clues first. See what we get. Absolutely nothing. I can accusation the tracker and force them to chump with perimeter enforcer but i think i would rather be able to accusation the six seven that's able to kill one of our flyers without dying so we actually 
do cast this cold case cracker this turn. Trade. And that is it. Provod Haunch, that's another gain three. Or they can put it on Enforcer and start racing with Lifelink. A bold attack. 9, 10, 11, 12. This saves us from on the job. They go to six and we crack back for six. We accusation whatever they play to block with. Kill them on the crack back if they just play a blocker. Yeah, all right. Actually, I guess we don't kill them through on the job here because they gain two more life. Shoot. Uh. Six mana to play Courier and Accusation. Trumpelion? Shoot, man. The two the three life gain on Haunch is such a problem. Okay, that changes nothing. We have to accusation the lifelinker to have any shot. Then we have to chump Hellion and be able to block elsewhere with Courier. Because they have three life gain on Haunch, I think I have to hit them for five here to have any chance of lethal in turn after this. Okay. I think that's the best we've got. They need to miss this turn and just hit like another creature. They dig with the clue. We saw zero combat tricks game one. I think we we're supposed to put ourselves dead to a trick here. So that we can have a shot of lethaling on the crackback. They're at essentially six off of the haunch. So I can't lethal them on the crackback if I lose courier. I need to have eight damage on board. This is really my only shot because we don't have anything else I think in our deck to deal with this hellion. And if I end up trading the courier off, I'm not lethaling on the crack back, and that means I don't even get to attack. I'm just trumping for the rest of the game, basically. Market Watch Phantom. It's actually perfect with the stupid Crowbot Haunch. Because they have exactly enough mana to gain three life and make the two dogs. And by making the two dogs, the phantom jumps into the sky and blocks our cold case cracker. So they go to one. They're going to be at six. Take three from courier and two from Mistway spy. If we can't deal with that. We have no shot of surviving next turn because of the dogs that go wide. None of this does anything. It's land, land, two drop. Land. All right. This felt like a really winnable matchup, which is really sad.
I think game one we could have won if we had not been playing around stuff so much. But this feels like it's... Oh! <gasps> Okay, we do always have that hope as well. The hope that they have not used Haunch's backup ability before. They probably have done the gain three and make the dogs. It might be that they just didn't connect the two that making the dogs would also give the phantom flying to chump there. Oh my god, by the skin of our teeth, we're still in it getting a third game in this round well as i said when i thought we lost the round i think this matchup is winnable our deck versus theirs we just gotta get playing better made a lot of lines that have not panned out well i don't think they were unreasonable uh most of them <laughs> with the information we had at the time but like every every decision i've been making in game one for sure has has just went badly for me so Certainly different decisions could have won first game. And hopefully we've got enough information now to make the right decisions in game three to find victory in the round overall. We'll see. Here we are for game three of round two. The slow hand here, but exit into accusation can slow our opponent down a little bit. So I'm going to keep for value. All three games of that turn one novice inspector must be nice. I have not gotten to do that even with my double novice inspector deck. Wish I had though. Be significantly better. All right, now we've got three drop creatures to play, so that's nice. No universe in which it's right to bounce a novice inspector, and they have so many disguise cards. They're probably not going to be playing a bounceable card turn three either. Gonna be some disguised thing. Yep. It's not a very good start for us. Night Watch is gonna be the better early flip for us. Hoping to naturally hit land four would be very, very helpful. Hardcast Night Watch is pretty good there. And we do naturally hit land four. I guess the plus side to the Hardcast Night Watch is we can unauthorized exit it. I think I need to just put things on the board though, so probably not bouncing Night Watch yet. We're going for the flip trade here. And there's the early dog walker this game. It's looking bad for us. The curve out on the play, including the dog walker. Looking really, really bad for us. Unauthorized exit's getting better, so there's that. Is that the on the job? Based on the first couple of games, it feels like they only have like one copy. But this kind of attack looks like they drew that one copy. I should probably do this because I still kill here if they um on the job. Yeah. I think those are the best blocks we can make against that. Fifth mana doesn't do anything yet, because we're just going to play a 4-drop next turn or a 3-drop, but could later, not really with anything in this hand, we need 6 mana until it matters, then I could Accusation plus Witness in the same turn. This might be a bad idea, but I think I know this.
All right, the end board state after the on-the-job here isn't horrific for us. It's a 1-2 and a 1-1 one, one for now. That gives us a little time. This is strange, but... I'm going to put a Curious Inquiry on a face-down witness. I think that's better than just playing a cold case cracker. Now I wish I did have land 5 based on that draw. No! Case of the Burning Masks? Zero non-creature spells game 1 and all of them game 2 and 3. Oh my god, and a Bomb Rare and Yielding Gatekeeper? Okay, their game 1 draw just sucked, I guess. Because this deck looks insane, game two and game three. Yeah, good lord. Just got two for one from that removal pretty bad. Is that what I think it is? Yep. Round three. Here we are. For the final round, we're unfortunately one-on-one -on -one, just got domed by the Nutso Boros deck. I don't think we can keep a five lander because any land draw from here is really bad. But it is both of our colors, it's three drop and a four drop, so there's some temptation, but I'm gonna mulligan. Sand is actually worse, but we hit a plains and we're in magical Christmas land. I'm going all in on the plains. I'm ditching a colorless spell. Full gamble. Full gamble. We've got no shot at the 3 0 prizes anyway, so. Let's go full gamble. And let's win that gamble. Plains as the first draw. And now the hand is wild. Almost definitely supposed to get, a bit, get rid of Inquiry, but Inquiry Courier is just too fun of a combo. Okay, well, if they're going to Unscrupulous Agent, then we will actually get rid of Curious Inquiry at that point. Arena giving us our second chance to change our mind about our Mulligan decision there. They're like, okay, you should probably ditch the Curious Inquiry now. Okay. Okay, unscrupulous agent, you got me. Jaded Analyst. Play that plus Inspector to lower my cards and hand count before we go for any Investigator stuff. Pretty cool with that. I should have attacked first, but I'll attack now. Rar. Alright, goodbye, Jaded Analyst. Pretty happy that gets killed over Investigator. Our... Two spell play looks way better than having gone for Investigator with how that panned out. Oh no! Inspector has been combat tricked. Our opponent isn't down a card though, since uh, their thing investigated for them. Oh. Their cards are so cheap that I don't know if Investigator's ever gonna actually investigate. It's weird. So maybe it isn't better to just play Courier because it's three power instead of two. And they're both two toughness, which is all that matters on the current board. Two toughness is more than one power. Anything I play can block their 1-1 agent. So I'll just Courier first for more damage. Is this just double agent now? Better not be. I swear. It is not. Granite Witness for the draw. Okay, if they had another agent, they would have played it by now, so... I think they would have just cast two agents and get rid of my last card in hand, so I think I can afford to play Granite Witness over Investigator again for the same reason I played Courier over Investigator. 
which is uh, get the higher power on board here. Slimy Dual Leech, that's very nice with these unscrupulous agents. Luckily, a novice inspector for an unscrupulous agent trade isn't going to be bad. Oh, there needs an on Gorehound? Okay, that's fine. I guess they do need to hold some blocks up. Unauthorized exit is the draw. I'm going to continue gambling here. We're going to top deck a land and play Investigator. Nice. This is the gambling game right here. We are all about this life. Just before the Magic Con as well. I guess it's after the Magic Con for all of you watching. But this is the last video I'm recording before I leave for Magic Con Chicago. So I was going to say it's, it's Magic Con Vegas style, baby. But it's, it's Magic Con Chicago weekend. It's not gambling Magic Con, it's... It's Chicago dogs and deep dish pizza and, and bears time? I don't know. What's Chicago about? Wind? Well, I mean, we're winning the race. This is a simple game of Magic. They got Neighborhood Guardian. Their deck would be really terrifying with a Neighborhood Guardian on board with all this stuff getting cast with it. So they're, they're black, white, power two or less. They do extract a Confession out of the Courier, but I still get five unblockable damage in a turn. In the sky. When does this trigger? Beginning with my upkeep. So we exit in the end step to trigger it if they don't play an instant. Oh, I think I just play a land and it won't trigger anyway. Well, then I hold on to this. Well, you've got one turn to stop the flyers now. What shall you draw? Not an out, so we're against Black White Power 2 or less, a really aggressive deck that has a lot of super cheap, super tiny creatures. So we'll keep that in mind in how we play future games, but once again, we don't have much of a sideboard. Maybe the Gadget Technician would be fine here, getting two bodies, both of which good enough to trade into those uh, those one ones and stuff. So maybe the uh, Technician's actually pretty decent here. Is there anything that's just not very decent here? Maybe Mistway Spy, 1-1 one, one bodies are not looking great. Anything with 2 toughness or more actually looks like it's at a premium for this matchup. Sure, we'll go uh, Technician over Mistway Spy. Although the Spy to go with the Curious Inquiry is still sweet, and they had very few flyers, so I still do kind of like that. Yes, this is a slightly weaker matchup for, like, Museum Night Watch. There's just going to be a 3-2 a lot. There's not a lot of trading going on. Sure, I'll play a Technician over a Night Watch, and then we're literally trading a 3-mana to play, 2-mana to flip Disguise card for a 3-mana to play, 2-mana to flip Disguise card. It's a pretty pretty even trade there. Alright, opponent is on the play here for game number 2. We've got the turn 1 Spy to keep poking for 1 if we want. I think we do with the way that our hand curves out. 1, 2, 3, 4. Sesame Street Magic back at it again. The Count would be proud. Mm. Two draws from Deduce, drawn discards from Courier. I think we can dig for lands. Might be too bold, but we'll see. Probably is. Should have just gotten rid of the five drop. Now that I've got multiple fours, I think I'll ditch one of these if they agent me again. Out cold looking not that important against their deck. Alright, there's land three. 
There's Wojak Investigator. They've got a lot of good cheap removal. I'm going to start with Courier again. Courier also lets us do some digging for lands without having to spend mana. Alright, well there we go. Courier gets murdered. There's the dual leech again. Eh, yeah, maybe out cold's gonna be okay. We got the little dual leech combo rolling in for damage. They can make dual leech a 3-4 death touch on attacks. So even if I hold off spy, they hit for 3. They kind of hit the same either way now. Play the Investigator over the Courier here for the beefier blocker. Not that it matters too much, but I think they are probably, hopefully, out of removal. Just one in the opener. Alright. They could have hit me for three with Dual Leech, so I'm pretty happy with this. Yeah, it, it can target itself. Just double checking. Crack a clue, play a novice inspector. Then we've got a great trade for unscrupulous agent. Sure. Our opponent is way too good at dumping their hand. It's not a great matchup for Wojak Investigator, but a three mana, two, four flying vigilance is still very good. So I guess it is just not like an insane matchup for the investigator. Where we're actually getting clue token value off of it. Maybe I shouldn't have traded here, because if we do... Oh, never mind. I was going to say, if we do, it might get them to actually start hitting for three a turn, targeting the dual leech. Which would not be good. Goodbye. Well, oh, the board's so good for Vigilante right now, actually. Get rid of Courier. We're going to play a four mana card this turn. Or a five mana if we hit a land. Okay, don't hit a land, so we play a four mana card. I think I am continuing to expand the board. Got a pretty nice pocket of life here to where we definitely don't need to out cold yet. Goodbye, Jaded Analyst. Final card in hand is Tesa. Tesa plus dual each is really bad for me. Because it's a really easy way for them to make it so they can keep hitting me getting the clues and getting the one ones, and I've got no way to make good blocks here. Yeah, that's not cool. We really don't want them to hit me. But there's no profitable way to stop them from hitting me here. So they're gonna get the Tesa going. I guess means we try to outrace the Tesa. They have no flying blockers yet. We can hit for six. If we just hit them for six, two turns in a row, we kill them. I mean, they've got one flying blocker. But I could, like, out-cold this one, and then they get one spirit to try to slow things down. If I hit a land, I can also Vigilante to buff this to get in well. Let's try to outrace. I think that's the best bet. Land into Vigilante and then out cold next turn for the kill. Boom. Like so. If we don't die here, they, they probably die. They'll have two flying blockers, an unscrupulous agent, and a Tesa bat, or whatever. I guess they could have three. But if Vigilante sticks around, even with three flyers, we'll be good. Oh, no, they're not bats, they're spirits. That makes more sense for Tesa. <laughs> so used to the bat challenge. 
and uh, and Lost Caverns of Ixalan with all the bats flying around. Yeah, so they're going to get another clue, which means they can get another flying blocker. Ah, oh, shoot. Oh, no. Oh, well, now they don't have the mana to get another flying blocker. They can't crack another clue. So I could out cold and then do five damage in the sky. If I don't die right now, I might die right now. They have nine power on their board. I'm going to be forced into a bad block with Vigilante, but I shouldn't just die here. Which means I should be able to kill them without cold. Okay, well that doesn't kill me, so I'll just not block them. Oh. Oh, that doesn't matter. That's still just two blockers. Actually, it does matter, because they don't have to crack the clue. Oh, no. They don't have to crack the clue? So if I go to combat and I declare the attack, they can just block. So we need them to attempt to crack the clue here. Because I'm a mana off from casting both of these. If I could cast both of these, then I could use one on this, and then if they make another spirit, I stop them. I can't do that, though. If I just main phase one of these, they just crack the clue and chump. And if I go for the attack, then they can also just not crack the clue and then chump. Because if I try to use one of these, they respond by cracking the clue. Okay, well, we're desperate for them to try to make another blocker here. Yes. And that should do it. I've gotten so many kills off of Out Cold recently. Where we might have just straight up lost the game. If our opponent didn't do something, but it's like so that's the only card we could have where it would be better for them to not make the spirit. So I'm just so glad I'm not on the other side of the table, because <laughs> the games we've been having with Out Cold lately. Just with this this recording session, with all the decks we've had with it, would have been so tilting from the other side of the table. Like a very similar thing happened with a detective satchel before, where it was like, okay, they have, um, they have a one-one flying blocker, which is enough to chump and go to like one and then kill me on the crack back. But if they try to make the second one before they declare blocks, then I can out-cold both of the blockers and kill them. But if they don't try to make it, and they just go for the chump, then if I try to out-cold before blocks, they can then make the second chumper and still just uh, survive and win. So that's two very similar games. That one with Tesa and the previous game with Detective Satchel, that it's like... I don't think I would ever not do exactly what my opponents did there. But they did technically have a way to beat us, so would have been a really frustrating loss to the out cold. This card just crazy in general. This card has been an absolute house this week. And that's going to be two and one for the overall record out of this draft. Nice little above average run. Sad we didn't get to get a 3-0 today, but that Boros round was kind of rough. Our opponent had a really nice deck. Um, they did punt away the onboard lethal in game two it wasn't on board lethal it was just that they had a way to actually block and survive and they missed it so we had a shot round two if i won the first game i think definitely we could have made much different plays during game one to win the round i think i was probably just playing around too much stuff playing around ghosts there getting too aggressive hoping for them to try to like counterattack on the job and stuff which with the way their deck shaped up it looked like it was a reasonable 
assumption to think they'd be that kind of deck because they did end up having the on the job and the removal spells and like a combat trick they had that kind of stuff they just didn't draw any of it in game one so all of our plays kind of blew up in our face there so again i think if we played around nothing and just focused on what the current board is and not what could be happening in the future we might have been able to win game one of round two and that would have been two and oh in that round then if uh if game two went the same way that it went so maybe maybe a winnable draft maybe one we could have gotten three wins but i don't think we'll know for sure unless you know we watch back every single turn there and think what what is this line here and then what did they draw here and that would take like two years so i'm not gonna do that potentially winnable draft here but two and one is still a really solid record and i don't think i played horrifically anywhere outside of that uh, game one of round two that was definitely a rough one at the very least but We'll grab our 1,000 gems and our three packs. Pretty solid prize out today. But that is going to end today's video. As always, I'd like to thank my patrons and YouTube members for their support, as well as you for watching this video. If you enjoyed the video and are interested in seeing more, you can always like, comment, and subscribe to tell the YouTube algorithm to send us more on your recommended feed. If you'd like to catch me live, you can check out the Twitch channel in the link in the description below. And if you'd like to support the channel directly, you can check out the Patreon link in the description below. But other than that, as always, thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you again soon for some more Magic Arena.